Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights, where I show movies and talk about them. Last time I had just sort of a, a grab bag triple feature, so I used it as an opportunity to show the original Godzilla, or Gojira, as it was originally titled. So I have three copies of this movie. Uh, the first one I got was just this nice little special edition uh, Godzilla DVD. Um, has the original, also has uh, King of the Monsters, the American version, which I haven't watched. I've only seen the original Japanese one. That's what I showed at movie night. Um, and then I, I have this over here, which you may have seen previous in, in videos. I've, I've had this sitting in the background. Um, the, the Godzilla collection, which I borrowed from my friend James for like three years and then I gave it back to him and then like the next time I saw him he's like ah here you could just have the Godzilla box set and I'm like okay sure thanks man <laughs> but then but then Criterion put this baby out I bought this with my Christmas money this was my Christmas present to myself it's beautiful Criterion spine number 1000 it's all the Godzilla movies. It's so pretty. I keep it on top of my uh, Blu-ray shelf. So now I have all of them on Blu-ray, on the nice Criterion Blu-ray, so I really don't need either of these. Um, this one I might sell. I feel bad getting rid of this because my friend James gave it to me as a gift. Maybe I'll just give it back to him. Who knows? It does have his name on it. So, uh, Godzilla, the story of, uh, an ancient nuclear-powered dragon thing that was trapped in the bottom of the ocean until bombs set him free, and then he rampages Japan. Very straightforward story, this... Not that much to it. It's it's Godzilla shows up and he wrecks shit. And you gotta love that. I I love I love all the little models in this movie. Cause they, they can look like real fake in some of these Keiju. But in in Godzilla, I think they are convincing enough. And on top of that, I don't really care how fake the sets look. I just love seeing them get crushed, get destroyed. I, I love see just the fact that it's a real thing getting destroyed. You know, that's why old kaiju will always beat modern kaiju, because they're destroying something real. You know, you can destroy a thousand CG buildings. I don't give a shit. Destroy a real building. Even if it's like a five foot tall, made out of clay building, just smash that shit. It's amazing. Uh, that said, I, I do not, I mean, I love Godzilla. I love Godzilla, but I don't think it's the best Godzilla movie. <laughs> I, I think there are movies in the Godzilla series that are better than Godzilla because they have more of, like, a story. Um, I really like King Ghidorah. Godzilla vs. Mothra is fun, although I don't know how... how I would rank that versus Godzilla. But I, I think I would put uh, King Ghidorah above Godzilla. Um, and also, as previously mentioned, I would put Mothra above Godzilla. I like Mothra better than Godzilla. I think it's a better movie. Godzilla's just kind of, well, he came out of the ocean and destroys some stuff, and we gotta figure out how to defeat him. And they kind of do, but they kind of just, he kind of just goes back to the sea from whence he came. So yeah, something like King Ghidorah is a lot more, first off, it's a lot more action-packed. It's like monster versus monster. It's not just monster smashes stuff. And it's got more of a story. 
I also just feel like the Godzilla spends too much time on the humans. Which is a critique I have of a lot of Kiaiju. They spend too much time on the humans, and it's like, I don't care about the humans. That's one of the reasons I like Mothra, is because I actually do care about the humans in Mothra. But nearly every other Kiaiju, I'm like... I don't care. Like, go, go back to the monster. I'm here to see the monster. Show me the monster destroying stuff. But I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm splitting hairs here, you know, because I don't really have that much to say. It's Godzilla. Like, what do I say about Godzilla that hasn't been said a thousand times already? It's amazing. It's Godzilla. If you haven't seen Godzilla, what are you doing here? Go watch Godzilla. Uh, directed by Ishiro Honda, who previously we watched an entire triple feature from. Uh, it, it was uh, Mothra, Battle in Outer Space, and mm, the H-Man. The H-Man. That was one I actually really liked. Um, so this might make him the director we've seen most so far. I could be wrong about that. I could be wrong, but I, I think four from the same director is the most we've had so far. Because I've done a few director-specific triple features, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Ishiro Honda now has the lead with four. Anyways, Godzilla, watch it. Is this, this was upside down the whole time? Up next, a movie I only have one copy of, uh, The Incredible Shrinking Man in this classic sci-fi ultimate collection. And I, I've previously shown this box set off before when I showed Tarantula. And I, I will say, like, classic sci-fi collections, it's usually, you know, a bunch of crap movies that they either bought the rights to really cheap or are just fucking public domain. But this one, you know, I mean, it's not Mill Creek to start. Um, it, it does have, you know, actual, you know, so, some fairly classic sci-fi movies on here, like Tarantula and The Incredible Shrinking Man. Uh, that said, while I'm willing to classify The Incredible Shrinking Man as a classic, I think I'm gonna go ahead and say this is the biggest disappointment of Matt Presents so far. You know, it took us a whole year, but this is the one I'm disappointed in. This is the one I feel like I shouldn't have recommended. It's just... It's... Okay, so it's the story of this guy. Um... I don't remember his name. I'm terrible at names. Uh, this guy and his wife are, like, out on vacation, and he gets exposed to some, like, pesticide, and then also, like, some type of radiation, and it causes him to start to, to start shrinking. And like at first he's just like he's getting uh, he's like a foot shorter and then a foot shorter and then like little by little he's getting shorter. And then eventually he's he's like the size of a child. And then he just he keeps getting smaller from there uh, until he's, you know, living in a dollhouse and being chased around by cats and he, he has to, like, go hide in this basement uh, to, to escape all of the things trying to kill him because he's so small. And it's... Not interesting. Really at all. The first half is definitely... Like, the first half is so boring. It's just, like, dealing with the... the like, like, him realizing he's shrinking and, like, trying to deal with it, but nothing happens. It's the second half that I think uh, draws people in. The second half is where he's, like, real tiny and he's running around this giant house. And there's, there's some, like, really good sets. I, I will give credit where credit is due. The sets in this movie are really good. It... it like, like, they have all these giant versions of, of household objects. It, it looks really nice. But he doesn't 
really do anything interesting while he's small either. It's like like he spends like 20, 30 minutes just in this basement trying to get out of the basement. And then and and then the ending is such a fucking cop out. It's like he he gets outside and he's like, oh no, I've shrunk too much, and I'm just gonna keep shrinking. But at least God knows I exist. That's literally how it ends. He's just like, Welp, God knows I exist. The end. What the fuck? Like, have him do something interesting with his shrinking powers, or else make him big again. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like this movie. I mean, I'll give it credit for, like, the handful of things it does right, but ultimately it's just boring. Like, I'd rather watch a movie that was, like, bad. Like, objectively speaking, I have shown worse movies than this. I show worse movies than this all the damn time. On Matt presents on on Matt's movie nights, but none of them are as boring as this one. N none of them are as just like I have nothing to say about this as this one. Like, 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 the only other movie that even comes close to disappointing me as much as as this is Thanks Killing 3. And even then, at least Thanks Killing 3 is so fucking buck wild, there's a lot of humor I can wring out of that. There's nothing I can wring out of this. It's dull and I don't like it. And and there are people who do like it. I hope I'm not pissing off any incredible Shrinking Man fans, but I, it's just not my thing. I will very likely be returning to this box, but that might not be the best idea, because uh, Tarantula was fine. Tarantula was kind of fun, but it, it wasn't the best movie. So maybe it's just not worth it. Maybe it's just not worth it to come back to this box set. I don't know. I'll give it one more chance. Moving on to a movie that is probably not as good as Incredible Shrinking Man but he's way more interesting to talk about. The God Monster of Indian Flats. So God Monster of Indian Flats is about this guy who works for like some oil company and he comes out to this small town, this small like cowboy town. It's set in the seventies, but everyone's cowboys. Um, he goes out to this cowboy town to try to buy up their land for this oil company. And, and that really pisses the people off. They don't like him. They don't like the outsiders. They don't want this big oil company to buy them out. And so they, they spend all their time harassing this guy while he's in town. Um, and, and like trying to arrest him and like frame him for murder and stuff. Uh, well, okay. Frame him for dog murder. Let me be clear. They do not frame him for a human's murder. They frame him for killing a dog. The dog lives. Let me be clear. No one kills a dog in this movie. But they're all like, Oh, you shot my dog. You bastard. Dog's still alive. It's a trick. But they're, they're, they're trying to make it seem like he, he shot the dog. Um, meanwhile... There are these scientists who are experimenting on sheep because something has, like, gotten into the sheep's water that is making them go crazy. The sheep kill someone. Let's start there. A herd of sheep kill a man. And then they're doing, like, experiments on these sheep and on this, like, one sheep and it, like, grows and mutates into this, like, horrifying monster. 
And eventually these two stories cross paths as, like, uh, the, the guy is trying to hide out outside the, the scientist's lab and the, the posse from the small town comes looking for him and they're, like, blowing shit up and wouldn't you know it, they, they accidentally released the sheep monster and so the sheep monster goes into town and starts killing people. Uh, it's not the best movie. I could have gone for a lot more of the sheep monster and a lot less of these people tormenting the outsider guy. But, f you know, it, it's, it has its fun moments, is what I'm saying. And I wish it had a little more of those fun moments. I, I wish it had leaned into those a little more. It, especially the ending of this. Like, where, uh, where Incredible Shrinking Man's ending was unbelievably lame and in no way redeems the movie. I feel like it almost could have. I feel like a good climax maybe could have saved that movie, and it just didn't. On the flip side, the final scene of this movie is fucking amazing. <laughs> it's my favorite part of the movie. Another guy from the oil company already, like, lives in town or something, and he manages to, like, trick all of the people into selling their land to the oil company as revenge for the oil company guy. <laughs> he's, he's like, oh, what we need to do is consolidate our land, so everyone give me your land and I'll keep it out of that guy's hands. So he gets all the land, and he, it ends with him giving this speech to the town, and it's just like this wild, unhinged, like, lunatic ravings that this, this man is going on. And he's, he's yelling about, like, violence and, and, and the evils, man, more violence, and, and the people, like, realize what has happened, and they, like, start a riot. And he's, like, yelling and cheering about this riot they have started. And they're, like, pushing over cars and blowing shit up. I wish I had the talent to write a rap album. Because I, I know some movies that would make for excellent samples in a rap album. And this is one of them. I want to sample that guy's speech in a rap song. This is a uh, American genre film archive release. Actually, the only American genre film archive I release I have in like the blue Blu-ray case. Most of them are. Hold on, let me grab one. Like the the clear Blu-ray case. It's the only one I have in blue, which is weird. Uh, the American genre film archive. I don't know how much I've talked about them before. Uh, they're uh, the, this organization. Uh, based out of Austin, Texas, and they they just preserve a bunch of wild, crazy, obscure genre films, and um, they'll do Blu-ray releases of them from time to time. Not many. They've done, I think, 23 or 24 releases. Um, I have all of them but one. Um... I guess excluding their most recent release. I think they released something recently I didn't get. But I, I'm I'm up to Curious Dr. Hump. That's the last one I got. So I have most of their releases. Um, not even always because I like their movies. Just because, like, it's an organization I want to support. You can see I, I have their t-shirt. I, I, I want to support the American Genre Film Archive. So, you know, I'll buy their Blu-rays. And this was this was a co-release with something weird video. Um, they they do team ups with other groups. They've done a few with Bleeding Skull and I want to say Vinegar Syndrome. I want to say they've done one with Vinegar Syndrome. So this is American Genre Film Archive and something weird video. Incidentally. Uh, last episode, I said the person I would want to, to guest curate a triple feature for me would be Frank Hinnenlauter. 
the director of Basket Case and Brain Damage, and Frankenhooker. Uh, Frank Hennenlauter has worked with both American Genre Film Archive and Something Weird Video. He, he had a series in the 90s through Something Weird Video. It was Frank Hennenlauter's Sexy Shockers from the Video Underground, and this was one of them. I don't know how this is sexy. It's, it, it does not really sex things in this movie. Because a lot of the releases from that were like late 60s, early 70s sexploitation films. Like it was the era where we were finally allowed to have sex in movies and some people just ran wild with it. This one, there's no sex. This is not a, a sexy shocker. It, in fact, uh, it, quite unsexy. If you, you look at, like, the, the sheet monster... But anyways, he, he did that series, and he released this or that, and he, he said it was, uh, like, one of his favorite exploitation films of all time. Um, and, of course, he's a board member with the American Genre Film Archive. The American Genre Film Archive board is, like, the weirdest collection of people you could imagine... It's, uh, it's the founders of Alamo Drafthouse, um, popular theater chain, Alamo Drafthouse. So that, that makes sense. They, it, I think they also started the American Genre Film Archive. And then the other board members are, uh, Frank Hennenlauter, um, Paul Thomas Anderson of, of Boogie Nights and There Will Be Blood, and... The RZA from Wu Tang Clan. That's their that's their board members, and I think like one or two other people, but not people I actually recognized. Those are the popular people on the board at at the American Genre Film Archive. And I just I just want to imagine Frank Hennenlauter and and Paul Thomas Anderson and and the RZA. All sitting in, like, a dark theater together, watching shot-on-video movies. Yeah, they do good releases. I like their their Blu-rays and DVDs. Um, if I had to recommend one, it'd probably be the, uh, Wakaliwood double feature. They did a release of Who Killed Captain Alex, which is far and away the most popular movie they've done a release of. Probably the next most popular movie is, uh, Satanus the Devil's Mass, the, the Church of Satan documentary from the late 60s. I don't know, uh, God Monster of Indian Flats. Not th the weirdest or the funniest, but definitely very weird and definitely very funny. Uh, last time it was, you know, the one year anniversary of Matt's Movie Nights, so I asked you about... Uh, what your favorite movie that I recommended from that year was. Um, I mean, and uh, I, I kind of have dual answers here because I think my favorite movie I showed was Run, Lola, Run. Maybe Dead or Alive. I like both of those movies a lot. Um, but I, I was also kind of looking for, like, movies people discovered because of that, and the, the best movie I saw that year that I had not seen previous to my own recommendation was Scanners, uh, David Cronenberg's Scanners, which is probably not a surprise, that's like a, a classic movie, so, but that, that one was my favorite, of, of all the things I, I watched for Matt's Movie Nights that I had never seen before, um, Scanner is far and away the best. Gregory House said, Jigoku was a really nice surprise. Um, thank you for watching Jigoku at my recommendation, Gregory. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I love Jigoku. It's a really fun, enjoyable movie. Um, very underrated, like not a movie a lot of people are talking about. Um, I forget how I... I it, it was definitely a Criterion closet that I heard about that movie from, but I forget whose. I want to say... I want to say Gaspar Noé. I want to say Gaspar Noé told... recommended that on, like, the Criterion closet. Um, 
But it's a really good movie. I really like it. Really fucked up considering it came out in 1960. So this week my question for you is... What is a movie you associate with a certain holiday? What is a movie you watch every holiday that has nothing to do with that holiday? You know, like... I watch Roadhouse every Christmas. What do you watch on a specific holiday that has nothing to do with that holiday? Because tonight we're doing a very weird triple feature. I'm, I'm breaking both of my rules. I have two rules for movies that can appear on this show. They have to be under two hours, and the first movie I'm showing is two and a half hours. And the other one is I have to show one movie I've seen and one movie I haven't seen. And I've seen all three of these movies. But I am willing to bend both of those rules for an Easter triple feature. Also, at least one and kind of two of these movies are not typical of Matt's movie nights. Are... are very different than what I usually show for Matt's Movie Nights. But it's Easter, and this is my Easter triple feature. So get ready for Matt's ultimate Easter triple feature, starting with The Last Temptation of Christ, uh, Martin Scorsese, followed by The Evil Dead. Uh, Sam Raimi film. I said we were going to watch a Sam Raimi film. It's Evil Dead. And to end us off, Donnie Darko. The best Easter movie there is. Even though I'm pretty sure it takes place at Halloween. That's my Easter triple feature. This is, this is a very funny joke. If you've seen Donnie Darko. <laughs> so we're, that's the three movies we're going to watch for next time. Until then... Happy Easter!